I want you to come along to this service tonight to tell you to look after yourself. You see, that's something none of us can do. Or you can try it. You can make New Year resolutions. You can turn over a new leaf. You can say to yourself, I'm going to stop the drink, I'm going to stop the gambling, I'm going to stop the bad habits. But I think all of us have realized this. You can try. But you can't really help yourself. And that's why on this Easter Sunday, I want to tell you about your best friend who's here with us tonight in this service. And he's up here with me in the club of all just now. Now don't be rubbing your glasses or don't be stretching your necks. You won't see this friend of mine up here. But you see, Sammy, how can you have somebody up there and we can't see him? Well, this hole's full of air tonight, isn't it? Can you see it? Can't see the air. But you breathe it in. And it gives you oxygen and you live by it. You can't see it. And my friend is here tonight, although you can't see him. How do I know that? He said that he would never leave me. And he would never forsake me. And he would be with me always. So although you can't see my friend, he's here all right. He's here. And why do I want you to know my friend? Well, you all realize who he is, don't you? It's Jesus. That's my business. I've always spent my life since I was saved. Trying to get other people saved. Trying to introduce them to Jesus. And you know, friends, I would love to introduce you to my very best friend, Jesus. And I'll tell you why. Some wonderful things would happen to you. If you made my friend your friend tonight. Now, it may interest you to hear what God has to say about my friend Jesus. And I want you to look at the book of Job, chapter 22, and I want you to listen to what God says will happen to you if you make my friend Jesus your friend tonight. Job, chapter 22, and look at verse 21. Now, here's what it says. Acquaint now thyself with him. And what will happen to you? You'll be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. Now, could you say that about all your so-called friends? Could you say that about your acquaintances? And since you've known them, you've been at peace. Good is come to you. You were honest, you would say about a lot of your so-called friends. I would to God I'd never set eyes on them. I've known nothing but heartbreak and heartache from the day and hour I made their acquaintance. Ah, but you can never say that about my friend. I could bring hundreds of people here tonight. And every one of them would have to admit that life wasn't really what they needed to leave me at the acquaintance of my friend Jesus. And that's what I'd love to do before you leave this meeting tonight. I'd love you to come and see me and let me tonight introduce you to Jesus. Now look what the Bible says. Why do I want you to make Jesus your friend? Well, look at the first wonderful thing that will happen to you tonight. Jesus your friend. Acquaint now thyself with him, and what will happen? You'll be at peace. Tell me this. Have you been in Belfast recently, or any of the towns here in Ulster? Have you stood in the streets and watched men and women as they walk past? Do you notice something? You'll find very few today whistling in the street. Great to be alive! Wonderful to be alive! Hello, no, no for thee. Look at the faces of people. There's an absence of peace. Oh, a lot of them are prosperity. <laughs> There's no poverty about today. Plenty of prosperity. People are well off. But prosper and cannot buy peace. That's why I would love you to make Jesus your friend. Make your acquaintance tonight. First wonderful thing about happen. You'll be at peace. And you see, the first love of he not only gives you peace with God, because your Bible says, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, friends, you don't get peace with God through coming to church every Sunday. <laughs> I've known people that go to church regularly, but they haven't found the peace of God yet. 
I knew a lot of folk, and you couldn't point a finger at them. They're as straight up and down as you could wish them to be. But you go along and ask them, tell me this, are you really sure that you're right? Are you really sure that you're seeing? Do you really know after you died that it would be absent from the body and present with the Lord? Do you know that? Ah, friends. Now I've told you, prosperity can't buy you peace. If the only they had money, they'd be happy. Some of the well-to-do people that I know, they're the most miserable. Money can't buy you happiness. You've all heard tell of Aristotle and Assis. Oh, you see, Sammy, who was that? Aristotle and Assis, you remember, was the shipping Greek magnet that married Jacqueline Kennedy after President Kennedy, didn't he? And after Aristotle and Assis married Jacqueline Kennedy, he was interviewed by a reporter from the Reader's Digest. And the Reader's Digest said to Aristotle and Assis, Now tell me, Mr. Anassis, tell me this. Are all your ambitions fulfilled? And he was expecting Aristotle and Assis to say, Well, I'm married to the most coveted woman in America, and I'm a multi-millionaire, and I have more house than some of you have in your head. Of course, I, I, I'm happy. Aristotle and Assis looked at that reporter from the leader's digest with a big tear in the desert. And he said, Sir, you asked me if there was any ambition I have not seen fulfilled for existence. I'll tell you the ambition I have not seen I never find peace. Only oh, like air. One of the richest men in the world. Never find peace. Money doesn't buy you happiness. My sister Jean lives in Balamina. I was down visiting my sister Jean some time ago. And she threw me over a glossy magazine. And she says, Sammy, there's an article in that you should read. And I looked at this glossy magazine. And I read it. It told the story of a poor man in Surrey. Now, you probably wouldn't call him a poor man. This poor man in Surrey is reputed to have 500 million pounds. But he's still poor. That's all he has. He lives in a small little house. It has only got 312 bedrooms in it. A small wee place. And he lives in that small wee place alone, apart from about 65 servants, of course. And this man that lives there in that big mansion, with all those servants, with all that money, he's been married four times. Every one of his marriages have ended in divorce. And he says he won't get married the fifth time, and then why? He had his fortune told. And the fortune teller told him that if he married the fifth time, he would die. Well, I'm not surprised, boys. He's 67, and I'm sure it would kill him anyway. But you see, at the end of that story, Jean said, read the end of it, Sam. And I read the end of that wee catch. You know what it said? That multi-millionaire was offering a million pounds to anybody that could show him how to get peace. How do you get peace? Men and women never forget money can't buy you happiness. And certainly money can't buy you peace. And remember, there's no pockets in a shroud. You brought nothing into this world and you will certainly take nothing out. Money doesn't buy you happiness. There's only one place to find happiness and peace. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be out of you. And I'll tell you another thing. Popularity and fame can't bring you peace. You know, I see an awful lot of young folk and they think, if only I could get to the top of the ladder of success, I'd have peace, I'd have peace, I'd find happiness. Would you? Do you remember the Hollywood goddess, Marilyn Monroe, reputed to be the most beautiful woman in America? She was supposed to have had an affair with President Kennedy. Tell me this, Marilyn Monroe reached the top of the ladder of fame. Did her fame and her fortune bring her happiness? The poor girl took her own life. She died of an overdose. You've all heard tell of F. W. Woolworths. Do you know what F. W. Woolworths said whenever he was dead? I'm the most miserable devil that's ever lived. All his money, all his fame and fortune didn't bring him happiness. And you see, why do you search after straws? Why do you run after these things that can't bring you peace? Do you want to find peace? Do you want to find happiness? The Bible tells you, I'm going to die. 
he said for nothing. What does he say about that? I want you to make tea to your friend because of the love of your new peace. I want you to make tea to your friend because of the bring you prosperity. Look what your Bible says. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Look at verse 24. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defence, says verse 25, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Why do I want you to make Jesus your friend? It's not only a peaceful acquaintance, it's a prosperous acquaintance. Good will come to you. Good will come to you. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. That's why I want you to make Jesus your friend. You see, Sammy, if we all get saved, we all become millionaires. There's a prosperity cup and going across the river, you know, and get saved and, and God will make a millionaire. God will make a millionaire out of you, but not in the way they think. How do you prosper after you can see? Well, in a very remarkable way, in a very remarkable way. I remember when I was at Cross. And after I'd be down and shook hands, I was back into the vestry again, and there's this big man from the Shekel Road stand with a fag in his mouth, and I said, would you please put out that cigarette in the house of God? So he stood there and I said, what can I do for you? Mr. Workman, to make up Belfast. I'm Mr. Workman. If I get good living tonight, will Jesus Christ pay my debts? I said, what? If I get good living, will Jesus Christ pay my debts? And I looked up to him. As a matter of fact, I said, Oh, his face lit up like the moon. He had to smile from here to here. And I said, Now, wait a wee minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't be under any misapprehension to him. You make a profession of salvation, I'm not going to pay your debts. Because, you see, the last man I knew to find out, I had a man in this vestry. And he says, Mr. Workman, I, I, I've gambled all my wages. He says, and I would need something to go for the way. He says, uh, would you lend me five pounds and I'll see you next week? He must have gone blind. He's never been able to see me since. <laughs> never been able to see me since. But friends, isn't it amazing when you become a Christian, how God does prosper? I remember well before I was saved, I hadn't two brown pennies to rattle together. I'd either drunk at all, or smoked at all, or gambled at all. And there are people living around us, the states, and Rath Tool, Rushmore, and they couldn't show you two brown pennies on a Monday morning. They either drank it or gambled it. And you know the lovely thing is, when you get a man really saved, they get that man changed. God delivers him from the fags, he has that money to pay his debts. God delivers him from the drink, he has that money that he has squandered to pay his debts. You see, it is good living. Wait thou thyself with him, and you'll be at peace. But good will not only come to you, friends, financially. Good can often come to you healthfully. Good can come to you in health. You know, before I was a Christian, I was an awful warrior. And now I know looking at you people, I know looking at you today, there's not one of you in this meeting tonight would ever worry. Never worry. You're as happy as a sand, but you never worry. Well, I wasn't like that. I, I worried. I worried about everything. If I was over there, I thought I should have been over there. If I went that way, I thought I should have gone that way. I worried about everything. And then I got married to that woman there. And that added to my worries, of course. I had a woman to look after now. And then David came. And I had a family to start looking after. Boy, did I worry. Do you know, I worried and worried and worried. i tell you what worry did for me. Worry gave me stomach ulcers. I had stomach ulcers. And at that time, they recommend that you drink milk continually and that you eat every two hours. And, you know, I couldn't get a bit at ease from my ulcers. And I used to, then I would tell you there, Three months out of every year, I was running about home. I said, oh, oh, it's killing me, killing me, it's killing me. And then they put me on the loose sack or whatever that, that, that tablet is. And, uh, and I took all Never did you want that to do. you know that the Lord healed me in the simplest way? Now, if you know me, you know I have only one son. It's called David. But our David was just a wee child. I was killed with ulcers at that particular time. And one night, then I said, Sammy, look, I'm busy. Would you put David on my bed? And I took my wee son David, took him up the stairs in my arms, laid him down as we caught, tucked him in. Do you know, before I was ever out of the room, I could hear <laughs> just enough to sleep like that. And I went over to look in at my wee son, and God said, Sammy, look at your David. Why is your son not lying there worrying for his breakfast? Because that wee boy has learned to leave that to you, his father. And whenever your wee lad kicks the toes out of his shoes, I just need to worry about the next pair's coming. Do you know what God said to me that night? Stand looking at my son's side. Whenever you learn to trust me as a heavenly father, the way that we son trusts you as a heavenly father, you'll be a lot happier and you'll be a lot healthier. And I 
realized, friends, that my trouble, my trouble was not there, even here. My trouble was, I was thinking fear. Now, are you a warrior here today? You know, that's the lovely thing about giving Jesus your life. He can deliver you from your worries, and your anxieties, and your fears, and frustrations. And you know, that night as I looked at David, I thought, that man has been cared for since he just Lord, Lord, he casts my care upon you, for you care for me. Do you know, friends, from that night to this, I have not had stomach ulcers. If you don't believe me, invite me out for fish and chips tomorrow night, and I'll be able to take it. It works. Good will come to you. Good will come to you financially. Good will come to you physically. Good will come to you yourself. Because you'll be at peace. And good will come to you. It's a peaceful acquaintance. It's a prosperous acquaintance. But it has to be a person of quint. You know what Louis Ten says? A quint now thyself with me. You know, you're great people for passing the buck. I get up and I preach my heart out. And some of you'll go that too and you say, Oh boy, did he fairly give it to them tonight? Oh, he fairly let her give it to them tonight. It's never you, is it? Never you. It's always them. The Bible says a quint now thyself is to me. Suppose you had a son, and that son became very ill. He went along to the doctor, and the doctor and he gave you these tablets. I go home and make sure that he takes those right. Now, supposing you brought those tablets home, and you walked up into the bedroom where your wee son was lying so desperately ill, and just and you stood at the wee boy's bed, and he just he ate all the time. Now, son, do you feel any better? Or you say, Sammy, you're daft. The wee lad's got to take his own medicine. That's right. That's right. Maybe you had a mother that was as godly a woman as ever walked in shoe leather. Your woman, mother's faith will not see of use. Quint now, myself, myself with him. Ah, friends, you're lovely people. I've been coming here to Valley Hill, and I've got to know some of you. And you're respectable, and you're upright, and you're decent, and you wouldn't do anybody any hit me. And you could trust you, but you never get saved yet. And you've never made Jesus your friend. Would you not, in this Easter Sunday, would you not do what I'm telling you? Would you not come and allow me to introduce you? It's a proper kind of thing. It has to be a personal acquaintance. Last of all, it has to be a present. What does your Bible say? Acquaint now thyself with him next week. Sir, tell me this. Now you're sitting in this meeting now. Would you, would you answer me a question? When are you going to get saved? When are you going to get saved? You've come to meetings. And you know as well as I get in your body that you need to get saved. And you've made up your mind, before I die, I'll get right with God. But you always keep putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off. When are you going to come? When are you going to come? You see, the Bible's a very down-to-earth book. That Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what the day may be. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Why now, Sammy? Because now is the only time you're sure of man. Now is the only time you're sure of love. You could walk out that door tonight by going down the road to your car and you could have an accident and be an eternity like that. There's none of us have the least in life. There's not one of us know the day of our death. And that's why God is always saying, Now is the accepted time. Now is the time you're sure. You know, I had a mission some years ago up in Rumbo Presbyterian Church. And Ken Smith was the minister up there at that particular time. And the people come out and there was many folks here. But one night I decided to have a meeting for the young folk, especially the girls for Ian. And I said to the girls, we now try and get your daddies and your mummies in. And there was a lovely wee girl just lived opposite the Drumbo Presbyterian Church. And that wee girl got her daddy in and she was thrilled. And that night I was preaching on the text, prepare to meet thy God. And I preached as I've always preached. To make sure that you come when you have the opportunity. And that lovely man, he walked to the door of the church and the Reverend Ken Smith was at the particular door he was going out. And he said to the Reverend Ken Smith, you know that man made me think, I think I would need to do that process. I would need to prepare because I'm getting on in years and I haven't been too well recently. And I think I would need to do what that man says. And Ken Smith took that man by the hand and said, well why didn't you come up in with me? I didn't reduce you to sleep. It could make you peace with my head. To Mr. Smith's disappointment, that man said, Now, Mr. Smith, I tell you what, I can get 
smaller negatives. Look to get your counter and can urge them for even success. And he wouldn't come in. That was the Tuesday night. On the Thursday night of that particular week, we daughter came home from school and she says, Daddy, I am going to the mission tonight again. I like it. I want to go and hear Uncle Sammy. And you'll come with me once. He looked at his wee girl and he says, I don't know. I will go some other. Daddy, you promised Mr. Smith you would come some. And I'm going tonight. And I see that you should come. I love it. I will. I will, but I, I can't go tonight. Now, you know this. Yes, you said. But Daddy, I see you should come. But that father didn't come. And the wee girl came over into Drumbo Presbyterian Church and I preached that night. And the wee girl was through. And she shook my hand and I. And she said, I'll go over and tell Daddy about the meeting. She ran across the road. Her daddy was sitting in front of the television. Daddy, 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 Mr. Workman was preaching. Great. Daddy, daddy. And she pushed her daddy down. Fellow, he was sitting there watching the television. And with the Reverend Smith Library that morning, from the old lady, you're going to give your life to the Savior someday. Do you think you can keep God that made you? When you sent the Son Christ to die for you. Do you think you can keep God waiting at the end of a string until you feel you're ready? God made you. God died for you. God's done everything for you. You keep saying no, 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 no. You'll say no one night at a meeting like this for the last time. It'll be terrible if it was tonight. Would you like to be seen? Would you like to be sure you're for heaven? Would you like to be certain that Jesus is your Savior and your friend? Then I would urge you, please, stop cutting it off. Stop cutting it off. You'll never find it easier than you'll find it tonight. Why didn't you come and make Jesus your best friend tonight? Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with new videos as they come online.